Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another great installment of MUT Evolution's Draft Countdown brought to you by me, Dark Alpha. To start things off, I'm the Raiders, and the very first play of the game is the perfect example of the Raiders. They make a mistake, chucks it right to my corner, who goes up for interception, and drops it. The Raiders have so much talent at so many positions. Well, not really, they really don't. But whenever they get close, they'd always make a bunch of mistakes. And this is a really frustrating game to play, because I could have put this game away all very, very quickly, but instead, I kind of got a, uh, kind of was a little naughty, and I sort of let up early and let this guy in the game, so that way he wouldn't leave. And look at that, right there. Should have had a pick right there, and it just goes right by me. But I sort of let this guy hang around because I didn't want him to quit, and I didn't want to hold play the whole another game. So forgive me. It's first and then is a screen pass. I hit him once, breaks the tackle. I hit him twice, breaks the tackle, and he goes for five yards when it should have been a loss of five. The Raiders just keep doing that. He runs third down, he chucks it right to me again, and he just watches it. His head actually turns as it goes right by, and I give up the field goal. But luckily, Darius Hayward Bay, the former 7th overall draft pick, has got the speed, not likely to be a Raider because he's going to be a cap casualty and he's going to pay too much, so he's probably going to be a free agent. The Raiders have almost nobody at wide receiver. Their tight end's pretty weak. They have a lot of needs on offense. Darren McFadden, their supposed superstar, has yet to make it through a season. And he's just been so injured. Marcel Reese, right there. Pretty much the only rock-solid option on that whole offense. He's a complete stud, great blocker, amazing halfback, coming out of the backfield, making catches, you know. And look at that, right over my head, yet again. How is this happening? Do my guys just love to ignore passes? The One of the good things on their defense is right here. Middle linebacker, Rolando McLean, who's not going to be a Raider anymore either, because this guy is a giant tool and keeps screwing up. The new regime is committed to doing things right, and they are done with his locker room garbage. He's gone, and I don't know if he's going to be back in the league anymore. Darren McFadden catching me a first down out of the backfield on third down, making things happen for me. The very first game of the season last year, they kept giving it the ball out of the backfield dump downs, and it was great because their new zone blocking scheme, after Darren McFadden had a great year with the, in the power blocking, they go to a zone blocking scheme, and then he just can't run at all. What a surprise. They're going back to the power blocking scheme. Maybe Darren McFadden will start to be great again. And then here, fourth and one. I'm going to go five wide because he signs up in, what, a goal line formation? I just need, everybody can catch. I'm just going to dump it off, and I'm going to, guess what happens? Yeah, yeah, that's right. No, 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 actually, I'm actually going to convert here. I'm going to catch the pass. Bam, first down, right at, nope, never mind, I fumble. I fumble a fourth down conversion. Is this real life? Two runs later, third and short. This should be after a kickoff after I've scored because Rolando McLean can actually keep coverage. Bam, user pick. All you poor Raiders fans watching Rolando McLean do great things for me. He's not going to be a Raider anymore. He's probably going to be cut. And they just have so many more issues. It really sucks they have to get rid of one of their best players. So, Rolando McLean gone. They just voided Richard Seymour's contract for a huge penalty. It's around $13 million. Drop of the pick there, too. What a surprise, Raiders. People not named Rolando McLean, not making plays. And then, so Richard Seymour's gigantic $13 million cap penalty, which will be more when they cut Carson Palmer's contract. Adams may get a pick. And I sort of get a little naughty here. Run it three times, kick a field goal, because I don't want this game to start over. And I just want him to, you know, stay in the game. But if the, with the Michael Vick restructure, everybody's thinking that Carson Palmer is going to either have to take a pay cut or be cut. Michael Huff getting burned. They had so many injuries on corner last year, they actually switched free safety Huff to cornerback. Almost got a pick there, just a little too slow. So they have so many missing pieces on the entire defense. They don't have either defensive tackle because they have to cut Tommy Kelly. Look at Adams getting owned by Brandon Stokely, the track star, who's, what, age 50 bajillion years old? So they don't have any pass rush. Not a single pass rusher had more than four sacks all year. And look, he's just going to loft it right up, and Huff just gets completely owned. And the sky's been lucky so far. Why not push the luck? Offensive onside kick after watching Problem do it for $100,000. I'm going to come out in regular onside kick formation. Bounces once, bounces twice. His ball. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, I hate everything. Luckily, it doesn't end up doing too much. He catches the ball, but no timeouts. He can't make anything out of it. So, it goes into halftime. Guess what? Another onside kick. One, two. I lose two out of two onside kicks. This is why I also have a chronicle of the Unluckiest Man on Earth series. You can also find that on YouTube. Stuff him on third short, fourth down, make another pick. Yes. Can I go all the way? Poor Peyton Manning is just too slow, and now I'm going to go up 24-10. The Raiders do have the number three pick in the draft to start filling all these holes. Where are they going to go? Well, if Geno Smith falls, you never know. They might take Geno Smith, or they could probably use 
a defensive line because Star the Tulele or Devontae Moore, both of them are really great, or if Ansa continues to come the draft boards, one of them will be left after Jacksonville and Kansas City both takes them. You know, we just don't know. They could also go cornerback. There's a few good corners in this draft, or safety, because they need some help because this whole team is terrible. They need somebody, though, that can do something because he's just going to pump it right into triple coverage right here, and he's just going to go up and get it. And after this guy gets a touchdown, we all know it's coming. That's right. It's not an outside kick. Can I lose this one, too? Am I really the unluckiest man on earth? Or is it just, you know, me just exaggerating? Nope, I lose another onside kick. I lose another onside kick. I'm going to repeat that. I lose another onside kick. The Raiders are, you know, missing their second-round pick from the Palmer trade, so they could also move the third overall pick, because they might not feel that they have a superstar at number three. The main instead choose to delay their pick into multiple picks, as he lost in double coverage here and gets a touchdown. And he's not lucky enough to recover another onside kick, because God, you know, not even God has that much power. So, they could also move their pick for a boatload of picks, and then choose to restock their huge holes all over the roster. The best part about the draft is the new, you know, salary cap restrictions, so it makes it really feasible to restock your whole roster in the draft, because the Raiders can be in huge cap trouble with Richard Seymour's gigantic penalty, Carson Palmer's likely penalty if he gets cut, and all the people they need everywhere. They have The Raiders have just been snake-bitten the past couple of years, and he's going to loft it right to me, and it somehow, you know, ignores the gravitational pull from my head and goes right to me. the other guy. It, it's just, I don't know, it's really frustrating to play the Raiders, because I feel like they're just such a good team, and they're on the cusp. You know, McFadden is, like, supposed to be this amazing, you know, just running back who broke all these records, and he's supposed to be, you know... I f I, am I the only one that feels like he has as much talent as Adrian Peterson? Because this, I've seen some of the crazy things that he's done, because I've been owned him in fantasy for the past two years, and I can't hate him. As much as I want to hate him because he's ruined me, I really just can't hate him because he's just so good, just randomly out of nowhere, just breaks these incredible runs like Adrian Peterson does, except the rest of his team is complete garbage, especially his offensive line. Watch Peyton Manning break a sack out of my defensive lineman because that can happen, apparently. And then here, my safety makes a great job defending the pass from me because the Raiders are the Raiders. Now, 4th and 24, he's going to kick a field goal, try for another onside kick, but not even I can get that unlucky because that is not possible and the universe would implode. So, I win the games, the Raiders against the Broncos, despite everything going against me, trying their best to make sure I lose the game. The ghosts of previous regime continue to haunt the Raiders to this day. Even Carson Palmer's trade, even if they cut him after he's done his whole time and then they cut him, they're still going to be paying the price this year with the second round pick that they're giving to the Bengals. They have a lot of needs and they don't have a lot of holes. And I really hope that the new general manager sticks to his guns, continues to build through the draft, and continues to take the pain that's needed to become a serious contender in the NFL. Because they need a lot of help, and they need to stay patient. Well, coming up next, picking number four overall, the Philadelphia Eagles. Alright guys, see you next time.